Thank you so much for having joined the webinar today. The intention behind today's webinar is to help existing Manage Engine users to understand where exactly does Manage Engine AD 360 come into the picture for your identity and access management. Post this webinar, you'd have a very clear understanding of the entire suite of products that Manage Engine offers for identity and access management. Through the course of the webinar, I'm going to try and give you actionable insights, ones that you can go back and implement. We'll get started with today's session. I'm Jay Reddy. I'm a senior technical evangelist with the Managed Engine Identity and Access Management team. So over the last two years since the pandemic hit, we've been working on quite a few uh, use cases, especially to empower the hybrid workforce or the remote workforce, at least till six months ago. Now, as we speak, I'm still working from home. We've got an entire organization of 8,000 plus people who've been working from home and we've taken a lot of inspiration from our own internal use cases. We've empowered very many organizations around the world. We've worked with that agenda to try and see where identity and access management can essentially help secure your organization while also obviously enabling your workforce. That's the intention and the agenda behind getting this whole IAM suite driven in terms of product management last year. A few of you would have already upgraded to the latest builds. You would have seen the new uh, features that essentially pertain and help and empower organizations for remote work. We'll be talking a little bit about that, but then the big chunk of today's session is going to revolve around understanding what should you be looking at when it comes to evaluating an IAM provider. For that matter, it could be Manage Engine or any other solution. But now that you already have a Manage Engine product, one of those products, it'll make sense for you to take a look at our IAM suite because the best part about the individual solutions, they integrate with one another, they act as a data source for another product in, inside the suite and the effect in turn helps you have a single dashboard to get the job done. That's where the whole uh, integrated suite comes in the picture. So we'll talk about a few points on what should you consider if you are evaluating a full-blown IAM tool. If you're responsible for both cybersecurity and identity access management, empowering your users, doing all the hard work, it makes absolute sense for you to pay attention. To the first part of the webinar, we'll talk about the evaluation criteria and then a little later we'll talk about where well, Manage Engine 8360 steps in and how can it essentially help you manage your hybrid challenges. Now with the whole remote working there are crazy new deals of challenges that we are trying to encounter and trying to probably for security issues mitigate them. We'll talk about the two sides of this specific challenge one, the logistics behind empowering your remote users or hybrid workforce. And the second being the logistics behind how do you get the security bits of it, right? How do you ensure the data loss prevention policies are set, right? How do you ensure they, your users get secure access? How do you ensure no identities are compromised or taken over? Uh, quite a bit around that. We'll talk about how can AD360 enable your IAM platform. That's the idea. And then a little later, we'll talk about what makes AD360 or what components come together to make AD360 AD360. That's something that we'll be talking about and towards the end of the webinar I'll also try and sum up certain critical capabilities be it from an identity governance standpoint or a privilege access management standpoint or enabling your workforce to go remote and helping them self-service themselves which makes a lot of sense right now and then a bit around real-time auditing, compliance management, backup and disaster recovery, and a whole lot around understanding user identity, seeing if you can go that one step further to deploy analytics for identities and extract the best out of the possible situation that we have at hand. Now, this is the entirety of today's webinar. I'm trying to um, give you a fair heads up. The webinar can be a little longer than expected. We are thinking somewhere between 60 minutes to uh, 70 minutes. That's how long the webinar is going to be. So let's quickly get into why I am now. Of all times, if you do not have a 360 degree IAM solution that can talk to your security, that can talk to your identity layer effortlessly, then it is something that you should definitely be considering. It makes sense right now because the first line of defense in your organization has moved from being one of your firewalls or any of your SIAM tools to becoming identity itself. Now, as we see, the environment has evolved in such a way that your identities form the very perimeter. 
or your users are scattered all across the globe or maybe even within the country, but they don't operate from your office anymore, just at least within your office space anymore. We see at least 60 to 70 percentage of the organizations who were remote at least up until six months ago or have gone hybrid right now, which brings them a new set of challenges. So how do you enable both remote or work from anywhere? It's not work from home anymore. It's work from anywhere. So how does that happen and how can that be empowered? We understand that the first line of defense is inadvertently identity. And when it comes to identities, what should we be looking at? What should we be considering? And why I am now is a very contextual and relevant question that we'd want to answer. 2021 has seen a crazy uptick in number of cybersecurity attacks, cybersecurity compromises. Also, another obvious insight that you can draw is the number of organizations that were pre-pandemic era, I would say, that were not digital first, have been forced to become digital first. They had to reinvent themselves. And in that process, new identities had to be created. Users had to log into their systems. New applications had to be used. And in the whole process, a lot of companies which were in digital first have become digital first right now. And we've seen a crazy uptick in the spending tool for identity management capabilities or getting that done. Obviously, one main reason is empowering your users to go remote. The next obvious reason, like I pointed out, is cybersecurity. Now, 62% increase in ransomware since 2022. Straightforward. You might have seen the zero-day vulnerabilities of Microsoft Hafnium or the Colonial Pipeline case or whatnot. Breach of stolen credentials, attackers are getting a lot more sophisticated and it's also a cakewalk for them while your users are working remotely. Identity security isn't as great as it's supposed to be while users are working remotely. So that's a problem. And through while we talk to IT leaders, the obvious concern comes up to be identity security. That's the first thing that every organization is worried about. Distributed, decentralized identity and each identity in turn becomes an endpoint or a potential target for an attacker. And these attackers are able to be very successful because of the innate problems of the old era. Now, back in the day, weak passwords were a thing. Even now, weak passwords are still a problem. At least back a while back, most of your access was on-prem. So that wasn't a big problem. But now, since your users are connecting it to your systems and resources remotely, they are going to key in their passwords on a page or on a platform or they can get easily socially engineered. So that's, again, a very big challenge that we want to solve. So IAM comes into the picture. Similarly, talk about privilege access and privilege escalation. While working remotely, while working hybrid, users tend to hoard privileges, privileges that they potentially might not need, but want it because they're for the sake of easy accessibility and they keep accumulating privileges and escalation attacks are taking place as we speak. And then obviously, the new network is difficult to monitor. You're not just talking about endpoints or units just within your organization. Now, believe it or not, the security of your users also very much depends upon what infrastructure they have at home or from the coffee shop that they're connecting or from the place where they're remotely working. So it has to take a major overhaul, you have to take a step back and revisit your security strategy that was on-prem first and see how can you empower security at the endpoint level. So that's something that can happen if you have a straightforward security first IAM system. Now through and through, we've got multiple target systems right here, multiple platforms that interact with one another, different stakeholders and business units inside the organization that have to interact with one another. And IAM seems to be that one common thread. So I've made my point pretty clear right here. IAM challenges are becoming increasingly complex, says Ar Akif Khan from Gartner. Now, these challenges are something that we've been trying to handle over the last one year. We've tried and figured out a few, but we are trying to still figure out more. Now, as we go forward, we want to have a foolproof way of approaching identity security we should be able to deliver the same service experience to all these stakeholders, both inside and outside the organization while the whole workforce is hybrid. With that intention, we will see what should a new age IAM solution look like. Now, security first is the obvious agenda. Now, you should look at both automating what was mundane, routine, and bulk, because back in the day, at least you were able to afford that sort of bandwidth to do these tasks, but now, 
it becomes impossible to handle both the security side of things and the logistic side of things. So you must somehow find a way to safeguard your identity and get the whole logistics automated. And in a new age IAM solution, you should start looking out for these four, at least to start with these four can get you in the right direction. Your new age IAM solution or one that you want to deploy should be able to be inclusive. Now we are talking about multiple platforms. Now, while we are working remotely, it's very obvious that you're going to use a, a ton of cloud applications. Your users are going to be connected over Zoom or going to be meeting on another platform, collaborating over Microsoft Teams. Innumerable use cases, innumerable applications and your IAM system should effortlessly tie in all of those individual platforms or target systems and help orchestrate identity right there. Now it's going to be a humongous task if you start manually provisioning users and managing their life cycles across those 10 different applications each of these users have access to. So that becomes a huge challenge. So automating life cycle and access management for your users hybrid identities is the first step. You try and automate bulk provisioning activities or bulk management activities, be it traditional activities like a cleanup, you'd want that to happen in bulk and in one go and in automated. So you should look for solutions that can orchestrate not in just, let's say, native Active Directory, but also in other platforms like Microsoft 365 for that matter, or G Suite for that matter, or if you move to Azure there too. So you should be able to enable your hybrid workforce and ensure there's business continuity. You do not want one day where your lights are out. You want the business to keep going on and you can easily do that if you have omni-channel orchestration in place. And then the next obvious step is your IAM solution should evolve constantly to adapt to the latest security threat. Now, just MFA, is that enough today? A lot of us say MFA is great. Indeed, it does a great job in securing your identities. But the MFA that we've got today, there are a few techniques like or OTP sent to your mobile, maybe face unlock, a few other fingerprint that can be bypassed. So we should start looking at MFA techniques that are adaptive, that are contextual, that can even make your whole identity security passwordless. So that's the future that you should be looking at. If your solution can do that, you're on track and up to date. If you're evaluating a solution, you're looking at solutions that can proactively respond to incidents. So now identity and access management is no longer unidirectional where it's just a system. Right when someone throws a security threat at it, it should be able to defend it and respond to the threat. That's something that you should be evaluating. And then your system should be able to take inputs from across different solutions, see if you can analyze the data and see how users interact with various uh, resources inside the organization, draw a behavioral pattern for them and help compute if there are any identity security vulnerabilities or potential breaches that can happen and notify you. So we are talking about user behavior analytics right here. Your IAM solution should be able to do identity security with UBA or user behavior analytics. Now, zero trust implementation. Now, this is the biggest uh, deal of the entire remote working landscape. Now, zero trust is a huge framework where IAM plays the centerpiece of the whole framework. Now, through the webinar, I'll break down how IAM comes into the picture when it when you talk about zero trust. We'll talk about that. Interoperability. Now, this again is something that you keep hearing quite often. How can your system integrate with other security systems inside the organization. Now, if all these systems operate in silos, it's almost impossible to draw any useful insights or get to action right away when there's a security issue. Interoperability is a huge use case right here. Can your system effectively talk to multiple other uh, systems? Or it has to be vendor agnostic and inclusive at the same time. Is it compatible for your existing architecture? Can it be deployed both on-prem and on the cloud? Does it support such an integration? And is it SASE inclusive? Right? You should look at all these criteria while you are evaluating a solution, especially now when we say inclusion and interoperability, SASE comes in the picture, secure access service edge. Now, all of these computational elements or security elements inside your network operating on multiple layers have to be able to talk to one another. And that's where 
the IAM solution turns out to be the glue that, or the adhesive that puts together all these individual solutions like your cloud access security brokering or your data leak prevention or your data access governance, all of that come together when you have a strong IAM solution in place and SASE inclusive therefore. And the final bit of it is customizability and ease of use. Obviously now there's no one size fits it all approach. So you should look at a solution that's modular, that can fit in to provide the requirements that you have. If you already have a solution, your system should be able to talk to it. If you already have, let's say, an MFA system in place, can it integrate with that? That's something that you should be looking at. Obviously, an easy user interface. Now, you, your end users also, to some extent, use your IAM at multiple levels when it comes to self-service and whatnot. So it should be both mobile and easy to use. So that's something that you should be looking at. So. On the overall, if you can find an IAM solution or while you're evaluating, if it does these four, uh, I'm very sure that specific vendor is headed in the right direction. With respect to management, I can say we help you do all of the four points that we mentioned in addition to identity governance, helping you enforce security, out of the box compliance reporting, creating strong workforces for different business use cases. While all of the underlying data is protected against attacks, by means of security implementations that we already have ingrained into the tool or giving you updates or live security feed through and through all of this under one umbrella, which is AD360. Most of you uh, who joined the webinar today and have written to me ahead of the webinar, I've tried to tailor the whole agenda of today's session to incorporate the questions and queries that you had ahead of the webinar. I'm trying to cover and give you an overview of what AD360 can do. Five major solutions or five major business use cases that AD360 addresses in my opinion. There are more, but I just like to stick with these five for now. Identity lifecycle management, very obvious, very straightforward. The AD manager component of AD360 does a phenomenal job in helping you build a simple framework where you can integrate multiple platforms like Active Directory, Office 365, M365, Azure AD, bring all of that together in an, under a single platform and help your users be available to access your systems, resources, applications, whatnot, right from day one. Helps you with clear cut identity and lifecycle management. It does that for you. And when it comes to hybrid cloud identities, again, like as much as provisioning and enabling your users and managing their identity happens, monitoring what activity do they do while they are accessing your systems is also important. So hybrid cloud identity monitoring is AD360's capability and zero trust implementation. Now the beauty of how this works, we've got AD Audit Plus, which is a big chunk of our SIM solution, also integrated into AD360. So you get the idea, right? Security first IAM comes from the fact that 30% of AD 360, at least from, let's say, the build standpoint, which is AD Audit Plus, is already a SIM solution as well. So you've got an identity access management suite that does user behavior analytics, proactive threat intelligence, helps identify ran ransomware and whatnot and helps you implement security at the edge. That's where you'll be able to go forward with your zero trust implementation. You'll be able to verify every user, every access, every privilege that's granted, any change that happens right there can be audited. And that way you have a continuous risk assessment happening through and through. Another fundamental pillar for zero trust. Along with that, you've got AD Self-Service Plus, the end user self-service platform that enables users to have strong passwords be able to access their applications after the second factor of authentication, MFA for that instance, or access any applications that they have through single sign-on. So through and through, you have zero trust implementations covered like that. Compliance, again, is out of the box. So again, a big problem because new regulations keep coming up as we speak. CCPA was the big deal last year. Now we've got CPRA, which is the updated version or upgraded version of CCPA. We've got GDPR, HIPAA, whatnot. New compliance regulations keep getting added. And we are up to date with out-of-the-box reports for all those compliance regulations. So there are 500 plus out-of-the-box that are already available to get your compliance do job done. And then there's obviously privilege access management through and through both user behavior for privileged users, their accesses, what assets uh, do they have privileges to, how can you make it time-based? Can it be just in time and just enough access? All of those use cases are covered with AD360. So just a few highlights, I would say, 
in terms of what 8360 can help you achieve. But then if I were to get more granular, I would want to draw a parallel with what Gartner considers as critical capabilities for any identity and access management solution. You've got the whole deal of 15 capabilities and hands down 15 out of 15 we, we can solve. We're talking about identity lifecycle management, user authentication, adaptive authentication, which we'll be talking about a little later, enabling your users to draw user behavior analytics, high availability pre-built into the solution, ease of deployment in terms of where do you want to deploy, how do you want to deploy modularly, granularly, that is going to be possible, real-time change auditing, approval-based workflows, policy and role management. I'm just reading out the whole lot. These are the functionalities that Gartner claims to be critical capabilities and the ones that we allow you to do as well. So that's where AD360 stands in the identity landscape. If you have a single point product, let's say just AD360, you'd be probably doing identity lifecycle management, certifying user accesses, enabling them for entitlements and get granting them policies, roles and managing use, using RBAC, role-based access control. Now, if you're using, let's say, AD Self-Service Plus, you'd be doing adaptive authentication. You'd be enabling your users to access SaaS applications with single sign-on. If you use AD Audit Plus, real-time auditing, non-standard application enablement, approval based workflow is something that's common to our solutions, access requests through AD Manager, and all of these targets, high availability and ease of deployment across the solution suite. So through and through, if you have a point product, you already are to an extent exposed and are checking the boxes for critical capabilities. And AD360 is a step up, which gets you to do all of this. That's the pitch I've got for you. But again, having said that, is this the one-stop solution in my opinion, there's a lot that you could do while you tinker the solution. An IAM solution can definitely at no point be a one-size-fits-it-all, which is the intention behind us making the solution granular or modular. So if you have a point product, you can plug in only that component that you think you need right now. So if you have AD Manager already, and if you want AD Audit Plus alone for the auditing capability, you can just plug that in and make it AD360 and call it AD360. Similarly, you've already got a very strong security solution. You don't need AD Audit Plus, but you need something for user self-service and managing identities. AD Manager and AD Self-Service can be put together to form an AD360 bundle. So that way you make the whole system that is modular and granular, and you customize it for what's your requirement, what fits into your existing infrastructure. That is the idea. To give you a quick glimpse of the components, you've got AD Manager, AD Self-Service, AD Audit, Exchange Reporter Plus, M365, and Recovery Manager Plus. Now, Manager helps you manage identities, essentially for identity governance and administration. AD Self-Service Plus is for enabling your end users to self-serve themselves on common tasks like password reset, account unlock, while also helping them securely access your resources with MFA. It can be at multiple levels. We'll talk about how MFA implementations happen. AD Audit, again, is a great security component that does user behavior analytics, that does change auditing real time, that can get into different aspects of your network, monitor that, check what how file servers are being accessed, check the interaction that your users uh, have with their privileges. What are they doing with their privileges? Are there any critical changes that you need to observe? If there's a lateral movement happening, a ransomware attack in progress, or a brute force attack in progress for that matter, some deviation in logon behavior, all of that can be tracked with AD Audit. Exchange Reporter Plus, if you are still on exchange, if you'd want to monitor, audit, get reports, get alerted if there are security issues, you can plug in the Exchange Reporter component. M365, for those of you who upgraded and moved to online uh, Office 365 or M365 <clears throat> on the cloud, you'd be able to manage, report, audit, get real-time alerts on activities on your M365. And obviously, once all of this is set, you need a disaster recovery plan or backup plan. That's where AD uh, Recovery Manager Plus comes in the picture. It helps you backup, restore, AD360 supported components, which is Active Directory, Azure, M365, Exchange, Google, and whatnot. That's the idea. So we'd want you to not look any further than AD360 if you have an identity access management team. And if you already have a solution in place, absolutely understand. It's <coughs> understandable. So you can fit and choose whichever components work for you. So now, as we speak, I'm pretty sure you already have a lot of questions. You can use the chat window to drop your questions. One of our experts will handle it. If you need further explanation to any of these components, we'd be able to take that as well. 
Through the course of the webinar, I'll try and cover a few aspects of functionalities that I think are relevant to today's scenario, which is the hybrid workforce environment, and see if we can draw parallels and comparisons and feature explanations for each of these components, all right? When it comes to hybrid workforce enablement, again, the obvious biggest challenge is security for your users and how do they engage with your platform. So there comes MFA and self-service. Can you monitor the activity of your remote users and their work as a great useful use case for both the HR and the security teams to check how are users engaging with systems? How long are they working? When are they accessing your systems? You can do a total load balancing based on how your remote workforce engages with your systems. You can try and deploy resources accordingly, see what, who needs, when do they need, how do they need, and how do you allow and deny access accordingly. And then in the terms of hybrid lifecycle management, obviously you have on-prem applications to deal with, cloud applications to deal with, provisioning identities for them, granting access to them, giving licenses for specific applications, removing accesses right on time, useful use cases again. And all these work better if they can integrate with other applications. Let's say you already have a HR system in place, a Bamboo HR or a Gray HR or Zoho people for that matter. You can integrate with the existing solution, see how you can automate lifecycle management from there. Obviously, zero trust is something that we touched upon. While we do all of this, can we delegate the right users to perform administrative tasks? For example, can you help your IT help desk to do remote password reset, account unlocks for them, or you know, manage privileges or initiate a backup in whichever system or uh, component or workload that needs to be backed up. Such is the nature of hybrid workforce enablement. It's very evolving and we trust we enable 83, uh, 8360 enables and thus our, helps organizations, especially enterprises, get the job done. Small and medium scale businesses deploy certain components, build their own bundle, they get the job done too. So while you are at this, the one obvious question is, what is the strongest or weakest link for that matter in your security right now? It's obviously your users. Your users are the weakest link right now because you grant them privileges and for a long time, there's been implicit trust vested on your users and that doesn't hold good anymore. That's the question that we're trying to answer right here. So you cannot consider users or allow them to use a compromised device. They are bringing their own devices to work and plugging that into your existing resources or your system. So can you trust them is the question right here. This again falls under the purview of identity and access management. How do they access your system? So that's something that you need to consider. Are they using compromised credentials? If one of their credentials got hacked and if they're bringing their social identities for that matter, using the same password across applications, is that safe to do? Absolutely not. And that's another reason why you can't trust your users. No matter how much you try to educate them, you are still going to have users who set their password as password at one root. So we'll have to come to a point where we foolproof it. And that is where you bring context to the whole access. See how can they uh, securely access your resources? How can you control and grant them access just as it's required? And how can you, in the process, constantly keep evaluating how they are handling the data? How are they <coughs> interacting with different resources and elements? Draw conclusions and go forward. So zero trust, three basic pillars. How do you let your users securely access? How do you control what access you give them? And also, while you do all of this, do you constantly keep monitoring the traffic? Do you constantly keep auditing? Do you constantly keep uh, sending out alerts if there's uh, a discrepancy? Those are all the concerns that you need to look at while your IAM solution does zero trust for you. Now, inadvertently, like I told you, a zero trust works on the philosophy basis that you do not trust any user. Users are bound to make mistakes. Access is given only on need only basis and only if someone verifies themselves to be a credible user. So these are all the premises for any strong IAM solution and hence zero trust too. And while you try to go about zero trust, there are certain things that you'll need to uh, understand. The whole zero trust is a cyclic model in my understanding. Now you start with adaptive access. That's where it starts, right? You do not grant access to everybody and anybody. You check their context. If they prove to be who they claim to be, then great, you give them access. And then right after that, you monitor their usage. How do they interact with your assets? What do they do? Are they risky? Are they accessing something that they're not supposed to be? 
accessing and then based on the insights that you draw, how do you configure newer policies? How do you manage their usage? How do you optimize that? And how, who do you restrict from using? And while you're doing this, you also try to discover where are your loopholes, what's wrong, what can go wrong, and how do you adjust your security portion and implement or anticipate a threat? Now, if your system is intelligent, if your system has machine learning in it, if your system can deploy an AI-powered user behavior analytics, then zero trust can be a lot more easier or less daunting than it seems. You will get to prevent attacks. You will get to detect incidents ahead of time. You'll be able to respond to incidents right away. Also, not just that, anticipate if something is happening, protect against attack while you continuously assess, monitor, rebuild your policies. This is the zero trust cycle. While you do all of this, you also enable your users to access securely. You give them uh, contextual access and passwordless access, which makes it easy for them to access if they actually are who they claim to be. So you both enable them with zero trust and also secure your organization while you are at it. That's the idea behind it. Now, we've spoken about zero trust. We've spoken about least privilege. Can we trust our users? How do we enable our remote workforce? All of that is fine, but still we keep your tax happening all the time. And most cases, it's just a single account compromise that paralyzes the entire organization. And that is where a components come into the picture. So let me try and take some time out to explain what components will effectively help you secure and also enable identities on the way. We'll start with the most fundamental problem, which is password security. We will see how your first line of defense which is password security apparently as we speak today, is not foolproof with your existing native systems. Now, a while back I said users can set password at one, two, three as their passwords. Now, if you take a look, take a look at Active Directory or any other legacy systems, which most of the organizations still use at some capacity, they do not have strong password policies that can prevent users from setting a password that's crackable, one that can easily be guessed, one that follows a specific pattern that an attacker can use a tool uh, and then hack through right away. Hydra can crack through any of these weak passwords in no time. A brute force attack is very simple. Someone can just go online, uh, find a list of passwords, use a brute force tool and initiate an attack. Now the access again is a lot more open to your systems right now. Most of the applications inside your systems are exposed over the internet. I'm very sure you've taken all the effort to safeguard it have the best in class firewall mechanisms and all of that but still if there is a weak password at play if users use predictable regular dictionary words if they do not change their password for quite some time again so many use cases come into the picture so you need to think through the whole password landscape and figure out what works best for you the ad self-service plus component does a good job right here a lot of you who use ad self-service plus would definitely agree the password policy enforcer in the tool helps you have a stringent layer of password security and enforce a complex password policy on top of an existing system. If you have Active Directory, if you have Azure AD, if you have Office 365 or M365, you'll be able to top up that security with AD Cell Service Plus and prevent users from setting weak, predictable passwords. No password at 123, no keyboard waltzing QWERTY or 1234 anymore. You, they cannot set palindromes or predictable passwords. Dictionary words cannot be used. You can prevent them from using passwords that were already used or specific characters from the previous password or enforce them or push them to use a unique code or a special character or whatnot in the password. And it, the whole idea is to scale password security to a point where it the entropy of the passwords or the difficulty with which an attacker can crack through your password becomes multifold higher. It has to exponentially increase. With each one of these checklist items, it becomes all the more difficult for an attacker to crack through. That is the agenda with which we built the password policy enforcer. It's granular. You can set different policies for different users. You'd be able to set a lot more stringent policy for, let's say, a more critical user, you'll be able to do it granularly for an administrator or privileged user. You can enable all of these factors. You can make the password a lot more complicated. You can also help them while they are at it, set strong passwords, enable them, and also as the second layer of security, use MFA to strengthen it. That's the idea with which we've built it. So password policy enforcer for strong passwords and multi-factor authentication and single sign-on right here to grant 
secure access and easy access at the same time. When it comes to MFA, again, we've spoken about it enough number of times. Users who have joined today, I'm very sure you've got some level of MFA implemented, but then AD self-service plus the password self-service component and security component of AD360 helps users enable MFA for endpoints for Windows logon. When someone opens, pops open their laptop, tries to key in and access your systems, there's a second factor right there. It's applicable for Mac, so for Mac OS and Linux as well. And then there's AD multi-factor authentication. Someone's trying to make changes to Active Directory or reset their password, there's a second factor of authentication right there. So an attacker cannot potentially take over an account or a credential without that second factor, which in most cases they wouldn't have. So that's the end of the story. Attacker cannot proceed forward. VPNs, a lot of us connect to our systems while working remotely through a VPN. Can we secure that? Outlook Web Access, M365, multiple use cases. I've listed a few where MFA comes in the picture and where AD Self Service Plus component can help you. And then obviously, self service goes with single sign on as well. So if you're an enterprise, there are multiple applications. Users need different levels of access in each of these applications. You'd be able to configure that through the SSO right here. A handshake, a secure handshake that happens through the AD360 self service module will let your users effectively and conveniently access your organizations and cloud applications or on-prem applications or ones that are internal usage, you can configure ADSSP. Whichever ones that support SAML, you can plug that into the AD360 module. So that's straightforward and easy like that. Flexible in terms of what MFA policies can be implemented, many factors. The list is endless. We are trying to add incrementally to this list, email, SMS, face ID, Google authentication, OTP, time-based OTP, radius, fingerprint, push notifications, you name it. All of them are being added to the ever-extending list of multi-factors. We are also trying to not just stop right here. The initial question that I asked you was just a very good. Now, can we step up? Can we look at context? Because our users are working remotely. Who else is working remotely? Your attackers are also working remotely. They log in from different time zones. Your users do that. They log in from different na 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 geographies. Your attackers and users do the same. So you will need to bring some biometric inputs into your uh, whole authentication process. See if you can draw context. See if you can use history to check if the users who they claim to be potentially maybe uh, the location from where they access, the network from where they access, other biometric parameters, the device from where they access, all of this gets recorded. And if a user manages to cross the threshold score for risk that we've got, the risk score as we call it, then they're given easy access. MFA is not that stringent. And if not, multiple factors get added to it. MFA becomes a lot more stringent. In the process, you also notify your administrator or you get notified saying that there's some malicious act uh, access request. That's something that you can do right here. While you are at it, you can do analytics of your user's context, their behavior. You'll be able to add the extra layers of security, configure policies granularly based on what you think is right for your organization. So risk-based adaptive or contextual authentication can go a long way in identity security. This is the next frontier right after MFA as we see it evolving. So AD360 helps you deploy this aspect of it. Now we've spoken about MFA, we've spoken about zero trust. These are all for active accounts and users who are proactively engaging with your resources. Now oh, there's a big chunk of users who left your organization, maybe were quit, maybe were fired during the pandemic, you never really know. But then there is a huge chunk of inactive accounts lying in your organization. I'm very sure most of you who are joining me today are smiling when I say there are inactive accounts lying in your organization. It's the truth. It's the open truth. It's almost impossible to get rid of all these inactive accounts manually. Right? Somewhere or the other, there's some or inactive accounts lying right there, which can be a potential backdoor for these attackers. This is one of the first things that an attacker looks for right when they scan through a network to find if there are vulnerable entry points. Now, this is that vector that can cause a lot of trouble because it's not just the accounts being inactive. At times, these inactive accounts also carry a few privileges that the attackers might want to ex exploit. Now, that is where the management component of our solution comes into the picture, AD Manager. Now, those of you who are using AD Manager, you might be using AD Manager for full-blown identity lifecycle automation, managing your user identities, granting them accesses, giving them privileges, whatnot. We'll also use AD Manager Plus for a use case that's very pertinent today, which is 
orchestrating the whole identity lifecycle management for a better service delivery. Now, there are multiple stakeholders, even from the IT team that are involved in the identity lifecycle. You have the service desk team or the IT services management team. You have other stakeholders who are non-IT like the HR, like finance, like legal and compliance who want some form of report or data from the solution, from the tool. So AD Manager Plus lets you automate and orchestrate the whole thing based on the policies that you configure, that way streamlining the whole process. There is very little scope for making manual errors. Extra access cannot be granted to someone because it's automated. You will not be in a, in a place where a privilege escalation happens without you approving it. So through and through, you will know that automating the whole user lifecycle does a great job in streamlining how identities are handled and also doing that securely. That's the idea. While your workforce is remote, you need to provision identities, give them access, notify them, 360 degree communication, all of that can be handled right here. Now we were talking about inactive accounts. That's the premise with which I got into AD Manager Plus. And I just gave you an intro into how orchestration and automation can help. It helps you do and achieve quite a lot of use cases. I've listed a three, a three use cases right here. I'll get to inactive in a bit. Onboarding and offboarding users is a great use case. Automating that can save a lot of trouble. Then streamlining access via delegation so you can predefine who gets what access based on certain policies. If someone gets promoted to a new department, can the system automatically uh, figure out what new groups should they be added to? But do that or implement that after taking your approval. That's great. Can I have fulfillment for the applications or licenses be assigned for users who are moving to different departments? That again is definitely going to be possible. While I'm at it, can I also do self-service for my users, empower them that way? Yes, again. So we were talking about the first use case, which is user lifecycle. One of the big problems is cleaning up. The last bit of the user lifecycle is the most complex one, which is clean up. Because while you provision them, you give them just five accesses, maybe, let's say. And while they have to be deprovisioned, there are 50 accesses that they've accumulated over time. And keeping a track of all of this is almost next to impossible. Multiple <clears throat> touch points. So if you can automate it, nothing better than that. The system proactively checks, makes an account of who's been inactive, how long have they been inactive. Since this user has been inactive, they've been disabled. I will disable the user. I will move the user to a quarantine OU. you. I will delete the user after X number of days as configured in the tool. So this is what the tool does. It can clean up based on criteria that you set. If a user is inactive for, let's say, 60 plus days, right? In that instance, it's going to run a thorough scan through all your target systems, be it AD or Office 364 Exchange, identify them, disable their accounts, delete their privileges, and quarantine them. That's the idea with which you clean up your Active Directory or any other target system for that matter. Similarly, while you're at it, you would also want to look at a few more use cases. The first one, obviously, in chronology is user provisioning. Can your system talk to different uh, systems or solutions like a HR tool or an existing Oracle database for that matter, import users as they get provisioned right? That'll be a fantastic use case for your HR and IT team. Most of the time, it's a uh, really strained relationship. We absolutely understand. I've been there, done that. It makes absolute sense. If you can minimize conversations and see if you can give the HR a form where they fill out details and everything else gets automated, you do not need to intervene. So you give them minimum access and rest of all, you configure in the tool and automation kicks in and helps users be onboarded effectively. So there's error-free entitlements. The right applications get assigned to the users on day one. Nobody is going to write to you saying that the applications were not provisioned. Can you help? Is there an update on this? Nothing of that sort, no more. And the HR is also loop. They're not going to reach out to you. So that's a great use case in my opinion. And there's also workflow automation. Now, while you're uh, configuring workflows, you'd have different stakeholders. One use case was onboarding users. Another case could be where you'd want the right accesses to be granted to the right users. So that can also be configured through the tool and it can be automated while provisioning happens. Automated user provisioning in AD Manager Plus, the identity governance and access tool happens this way. You can have any input source. It can be a CSV file. It can be a form that the HR filled or an existing database or even a HRMS tool or a human capital management tool. The data gets imported. It gets 
validated right privileges for the right department for the right user based on the criteria that you pre-populated gets assigned. Their licenses are given, the users notified, they sent uh, a notification and onboarding email welcoming them to the team and they get to start work from day one. So while they are at it, while they initiate that uh, go forward with onboarding, uh, many a times it's also a concern, what do you do about existing users? We talk about users moving between different departments, opting for a transfer, moving between offices. Hub and spoke model seems to be the trend these days. Hybrid working, moving between offices, working from wherever you choose to. So new use cases get added to your identity management. Can my access management be condition based? I can see users belonging to this specific branch or the working from home or working from office have different policies. I can do that. I can assign predefined conditions. If someone gets promoted, I can say, add them to these groups. If someone moves to a different department, add them to these groups or remove them from their previous groups. Such use cases for access management for privileges and system resources can be done through the tool. Similarly, while you're delegating privileges, the problem that I pointed out was the granularity and how people tend to hoard privileges. So that's something that you can address with the granular delegation that's available in the product. You do not let anybody have actual privilege. Rather, if you can just let them impersonate and have just in time and just enough privileges for that dedicated predefined span of time, nothing better than that. That way your whole rule-based access management is streamlined. You'd be able to help them get those tasks done, but at the same time, revoke it right when it's done. So that's the idea with which you proceed forward when it comes to role-based de delegation or non-invasive delegation or privileged elevation and delegation management, you can get that done. And obviously, access to files, servers, permissions to folders, all of that can be done in a similar fashion. That's where AD manager component comes into the picture. So if you use AD self-service plus you know how you can empower your end users how it makes sense to empower yourselves too with ad manager plus with automation with delegation with workflows all pre-built and on top of it there are out of the box reports for all of these use cases that we just discussed empowering our users one side empowering ourselves one side again there's this problem through and through no matter how clean you try to be still your users can make mistakes you your users can make a careless mistake they can probably even be a rogue insider or a malicious insider how do you foolproof your system and that's where the third component of the tool comes into the picture which helps you track user behavior which helps you prevent a malware attack from progressing which stops a threat actor lately moving and prevents any form of privilege abuse now that's a big claim i would say but ad audit component of ad 360 does that because like I earlier mentioned, AD audit forms a big chunk of our SIM offering log 360 as well. A few of you might already be using it. So if you've got that, you'll be able to incorporate that into our identity access management solution. It can help you automate the whole threat detection and response mechanism with which you can go forward. The user behavior analytics is a cool component. Just like how we have contextual access, the same data use used right here to predict user behavior, check if they are who they claim to be, track any anomalous activity. If there is unusual activity in the terms in terms of volume or velocity with which they access, then you get notifications. It could be for a specific routine that they daily do. Something as simple as logging on to something as critical as accessing a corporate file or a folder that holds the financial data or let's say some intellectual property in your company, you would know who does what access and what's their characteristic behavior. And if there are any deviations in terms of their privilege usage or unusual file activity, your identity intelligence and user behavior analytics module of AD Audit Plus steps in. It gives you a bird's eye view. It gives you a, a full blown view of who's doing what, what users got created, who were enabled, who were deleted, how did they move? What resources did they access? Were there any bad password items? Were there any logon failures? All such details to the last granular specification gets noted right here. You'd get an alert. You'd be able to analyze that. The system does proactive analytics and notifies you as well. So through and through while you're at it, getting these alerts, being on top of the system, you would also want to be compliant. You would want to have audit trails if you're doing a root cause analysis. You'd be able to do that with AD Audit Plus. Tells you exactly what happened how did it happen? What were the configuration changes were made? 
And if you have the next component that I'll be talking about, have a, a mental a bookmark right there for Recovery Manager Plus. I'll tell you how both AD Audit Plus and Recovery Manager Plus can work hand in hand while it's a critical change that you want to undo or back roll. You can do all of that. If you can track changes that are happening, see what privileges have been misused. If you want to remove someone of some group, you'll be able to make the decision right here with the data. Go back to AD Manager Plus, do that. If you want to roll back something, you'll be able to go to Recovery Manager Plus and do that. And that's the beauty of having the solution integrated or letting them talk with one another. And AD Audit Plus lets you do that. AD 360 lets you do that. And the comprehensive audit trail right here gives you all that data. Going a little forward in terms of change auditing, you'll be able to detect anomalous spikes. You'll be able to prove and prevent a potential threat such as, let's say, a brute force attack attempt or a malware being deployed or a ransomware in progress. You'll be able to kick that specific user out with a predefined script or a configuration that you have for specific use cases. You'll be able to act right when it it's needed. So you wouldn't need to wait for someone to be alerted Till you respond, you will be able to offer automated threat response right here. You can configure scripts. Our uh, developers, in-house developers have configured hundreds of scripts you can make use of it. If you're an existing AD Audit Plus customer, do write to me after the webinar. I'll see what scripts that I can help you with. If you are looking at evaluating too, it makes absolute sense to deploy AD Audit Plus because it gives you real-time change auditing reports. It gives you severity-based notifications. It will tell you what's most critical, what is in, what you can probably put in the back burner and evaluate a little later. So you get real time reports. And obviously, while you're at it, it does make sense if you can put all of this together, churn it into a compliance report to big problem, end of the year compliance reports on top of your head. You've got out of the box reports, AD Audit Plus can help you do that. And then there's insider threat detection. Just a quick second right here. Take a second to take a look at the list of compliance. This is an endless list we keep updating GDPR, SOCs, HIPAA, mainstream compliance or the new ones that are pertinent to a specific geography, we do that too. So the list is endless. We help you stay up to date with respect to compliance too. And a while back we were talking about insiders and how they can be a problem. It can be a rogue insider who's misusing their privilege or it can be a forgetful uh, user who gave away their password or did not have a strong password. It can be any of those cases, but still you'll be able to draw reports, check if there are any uh, suspicious activity like logon failure, check if there's any sensitive data that's being accessed. And if right after a uh, logon failure, you see someone accessing a critical file or a folder, you would be notified because there's user behavior analytics right there. You'd be able to correlate all of that and make an informed decision. You'll be able to stop a data leak from pro progressing. It could be both on prem or on the cloud. Let's say your M365 for that matter, you will be able to stop your users from copying critical data or at least get notified if that's what you choose to. So you can have a clear cut data exfiltration report. AD Audit Plus helps you do who accessed what file at what point in time. When you're doing root cause analysis and some file was tampered, you exactly did that. And if it's an Malware or a ransomware that's tampering your file, the situation is no different from a malicious insider. You'd still want to be able to get on top of the situation, trigger an immediate alert to whoever are the stakeholders, the security team responsible, lock down whichever system is being infected or in the process of infection because ransomware spread. You'd be able to contain it right away because you can detect anonymous activity not just at an user level, but also if there are, let's say, file modifications. What are ransomers and how do they usually operate? They get deployed. They try to change the extension of the file. They encrypt the file and they ask for a ransom if you want to unencrypt it. So the system can track any modifications made to files. File integrity monitoring helps you do that. And it can prevent a malware or a ransomware in that process. Now, this is after entry, right? After a malware gets into your system, your AD Audit Plus lets you do that. Check any insider activity. That's the AD Audit component so far. What if you want to prevent it even before something creeps into your organization? 94% of the malwares, like the stat right here says, are delivered by email. You have a user who opens an email that says, do not open or do not click. That's where the trouble begins. So you can enable mailbox protection with M365 Manager Plus. Our, or M365 Security Plus, few of our offerings right there. It does a very extensive job in monitoring mailboxes on M365 reporting, helping you audit. It's not just mailbox, your 
licenses can be managed right here, users can be managed right here. Orchestration and automation can happen on prem and online for M365 similarly. Quite a few use cases that can be achieved and we help you solve all of that. While you, uh, that happens, there's context-based uh, search or e-discovery like we say. Usually while transactions happen online, can you stop your users from sending some corporate data that's critical that can be done? Can you prevent users from falling prey for these uh, instances where someone pretends to be someone else Say, for example, cousin domains, Google uh, spelled differently or any other organization spelled differently, they try to reach you. And you can prevent that usually from having a context right here to that gets sent or that gets received. You can have indicators or flags for specific keywords and you can prevent your users from using or attaching any of the critical property to your organization. This is very crucial. Most of the activity that we talk about today happens through emails or communication or collaboration apps, let's say Teams for that matter, and we want users to not fall prey for that. You'd be able to do that with the context-based search or the content search or the e-discovery option that you've got. You'll be able to pre-configure what needs to be ones that are a clear no-no sound critical corporate data or PII for that matter, or credit card information, social security information, all of that can be prevented with the pre-built patterns that are in the solution. You can add custom patterns that befit your organization too and prevent users while they're at M365 or using any of the M365 applications to dispel or divulge any data unintentionally. You can do that. And then is the last bit of the whole identity access management suite. The whole process comes to a <clears throat> standstill if you do not have a backup. Now, no matter how good you try to secure it, security is a very evolving and a very ambiguous uh, landscape. You never really know. That being the case, it makes sense to be able to recover it from within the tool only. If you've got users who need immediate access, now you must be able to roll back. If you've noticed uh, some critical privilege escalations that are happening in your system, you should be able to pinpoint which ones. A while back, I asked you to have a virtual mind bookmark for AD Audit Plus and Recovery Manager Plus. This is where it <coughs> fits in. If there's a critical change, you'll be able to monitor that and notify that via AD Audit Plus. And if you have Re Recovery Manager Plus, you can undo that change and go back to a previously secure change because we help you do AD rollback. It's very granular. It can help you do item level and object level res restoration. And if there are objects that are deleted unintentionally, you can bring that back. Then there's obviously M365 Exchange and Office 365 Backup too. So 360 degree backup for your critical identity and access management platforms does make a lot of difference while you're facing a security alert, security attack, or some catastrophe hit and your data is all gone. So Recovery Manager Plus helps you store your data on multiple platforms. You can choose how you want to deploy recovery. You can get on top of the situation and perform a disaster recovery right there with this last component of recovery, last component of AD360, the Recovery Manager Plus. So through and through, we have discussed components such as the, the identity governance components, which is AD Manager, the auditing and security component, AD Audit Plus, self-service for empowering your users, AD Self-Service Plus, Exchange, Office 365 and M365 reporting, monitoring and auditing with M365 Manager Plus. And yes, the last bit of it for recovery right after an attack or right when there's a calamity, you'd want your data back, you've got Recovery Manager Plus. So through and through, it's a 360 degree approach to identity access management. I've emphasized enough on the security first approach. If you're an existing AD customer, you use any of the AD tools, you'd know you'd be able to incorporate all these strategies if you have the other component. You can pick and choose which ones work for you. You can try and customize the whole bundle as per your requirement. I'm available on the chat for the next uh, five to 10 minutes. I'm very sure you've already asked your questions to our experts. A big shout out for the experts today, Prashant, Debanjali and Gokul for facilitating and being there for, through the session answering questions. Thank you so much, guys. And also something that I'd want to let you in on is the year-end offers that we are running. This is something that you should absolutely make use of. You can write to me if you want to avail the year-end offers on a new purchase or if you want another new component that you're trying to incorporate to your identity access management suit. So the one of the components that we discussed today, 
I'll be more than happy to get you this discount. I'll put you in touch with the sales team. But before that, I just want you to take some time. I'm going to send out the recording of the webinar today and also send out a couple of resources, especially a buyer's guide that we put together where it's much more granular. I've almost hit the one hour mark. So I'm going to stop right here, but I'm going to give you the buyer's guide so that you can make that informed decision to see which component would really work for your environment and i'm available to answer your questions if at all after the webinar you have doubts as to what which works which doesn't you can write to me i'd be more than happy to run a call and help you figure out what works best so just a quick reminder once again your offers are out there they are a limited time offer and we'd want you to make the best use of we are almost close to the thanksgiving week so an advanced thanksgiving week for all of you who've joined today Thank you so much for taking the time out towards the end of the deck, which I'll be emailing out attached and other details pertaining to the tool, which is the buyer's guide architecture of the tool and a few more technical data that you'd want to take a look at. I'm going to be emailing the slide deck over to you shortly with other details that I promise I'm going to share. Do write to me if you have questions. You've been such a lovely audience. Thank you so much. Y'all take care and stay safe. Talk to you real soon.